Hey everybody, Danny Moore here. Thanks for joining us. How often do you try to add more distance to your driver by adding some more speed, but all you find is that your slice just gets bigger or your hook gets bigger? How do you add that speed but maintain the control? To do this, you're gonna to need to learn how to square the club face at impact. You're gonna to need to learn how to control it. To do that, you're gonna to need to learn how the wrists work in the downswing and how basically you release that driver through the impact area. It's slightly different to iron, so we'll discuss both today. Now before I get into the lesson, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, I always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below so you never have to remember a thing. Okay, so let's do this in three stages. The first thing I'm gonna teach you is, is I wanna show you how you can generate more speed through just correct wrist motion, okay? Most people lack this, and it's the easiest way you can generate speed. But there's no point generating speed, like I say, if you're hitting it everywhere. So in stage two, we'll show you how you can control those wrists, okay, to, to make sure the club arrives square at impact. And then third and finally, we'll bring in how you can support all of that with a correct body motion, okay? So let's start with the wrist first. How can you get some easy wins? How do you generate speed? Well, the first thing you've got to do is this. You've got to create some form of catapult motion through the shot. And it's different with driver in the eyes. I'll cover that right now, but you've got to get a catapult motion. So if you can do this, do this with me. Grab a club and just simply feel that. Just feel the momentum of this club speeding up. Now to do it, what do you notice? This bit isn't moving, it's stopped to allow the club to catapult through. When people are losing speed, and you might be the same, this is moving too much at the same time as the club. It's not, there's no break on it, and therefore there's no fire, okay? And they're often because you get to the top like this, you're turning your shoulders, you're steering it, you're trying to control it, possibly because you, you've been hitting the ball everywhere, so naturally you want to control the club. Well, this is the first session I want you to do. I want you to truly start to let go of this club. And the way you're gonna do this is just for now, get the sensation of this. The wrist here cocking straight up and then uncocking downwards. So you're getting some form of release, a little bit of the catapult motion, yeah? And then what you wanna do is you wanna apply this now to the club. So literally get the wrist cocking up and then watch this. All I'm gonna do is simply for now, just literally cock them down. Cock up, cock down. I am not, by the way, steering it. I'm not guiding it. I'm just truly letting the club just literally uncock. And as I'm doing this, I'm getting some speed, okay? Now, all you've got to do is you just feel the subtle difference between an iron and a wood. We'll talk about control in a second. With an iron, we strike the ball, then the ground. So with an iron, we want an impact position where the club is hitting down on the ball, and it's roughly there. So where would we release, or where would our body naturally need to be in order to help that natural release happen? I don't know about you, but I feel like my body needs to be more over this side, more over here, and then when I down cut, look, I'm striking the ball, then the ground. I wouldn't be here, because that would get me hitting up on the ball. I would be more there. With driver, very subtly, I wanna, don't wanna hit the club on the way down, I wanna hit it on the way up. So look at this, where's the handle going? Handle's going higher, isn't it? So look at this, on the, the ball's further forward in our stance and the handle, we wanna hit up on the ball, this way. Where's the handle? It's higher. Where's my shoulder? Higher. So now when I cock the wrists up and I cock them down, I'm gonna visualize and feel that there's a rising of this shoulder as I down cock the club. Can you see this? This is gonna get me now getting a sense of up with driver. What I'm not doing, by the way, is turning because I can't down cut from there and that's just going to get me going very flat and slicey, okay? So I'm down cocking and simply working up. Spend some time just hitting a couple of shots. Start off with your irons first, then do a few with your driver with the only purpose on feeling how these wrists cock up and cock down. Don't, most people when they first start this, they guide it, steer it, just let it go. Don't worry about where the ball goes because we're gonna work in control in stage two. So you now can feel that lovely speed, can't you, through the impact area. But it feels out of control. How are you supposed to control it so the club actually arrives square every time and it doesn't arrive closed or open? Well, we don't wanna put it in position. That's artificial. We need to let this club flow. So to you, for you to arrive at impact on a regular basis square, you need to learn the feel of impact. This is super, super important. All great players, you look at them, they've all got different swings, but do you know what? They look like this with their driver at impact. 
At the moment of impact, cool drill for you in a minute. At the moment of impact, the lead arm and club form a straight line. The weight is on the lead side. There's a little uh, tilt in, this, in the spine here and they're leaning backwards. This is helping them hit up on the ball. But this is where they are. This key aspect here is where they are. So when they do fire this club here, that's where they're at, okay? You need to learn this feeling, okay? Now it looks super simple, doesn't it? This will tell you whether you're doing it or not, okay? So all you do is get a box. Line the box up so it's halfway, so the ball's halfway um, from this box here. Get the lead heel in line with this section of this corner of the box here and get yourself set up. Now this is my driver setup. Now you'll notice here that the shaft, my shaft angle is angled away from the box here. I've got a slight tilt in my spine, okay? This is my driver setup. Now, as I swing back and I start to approach impact, watch the change. What's happening now? I say as I knock this ball off the, off the tee here, my pressure's gone onto, onto my lead foot here. I've got a tilt in my spine here, okay? The shaft now is flat on the box and my head has gone slightly behind. All these things is the kind of sensations that you'll see with any top player. If you slice the golf ball, you might suddenly find yourself doing this. I can't even see the tee now because I've gone over the top. There it is. Now I can see it, so you might, this is a great feedback station. You might be somebody who drives the handle too much. Are you slide too much? Well, now look where the face is. How are you gonna try and square that up? You're gonna be in real trouble, yeah? You might be somebody who hangs back in an attempt to try and hit up off the ball. Well, again, how are you gonna get the shaft on the box there? Gonna be really, really tricky. So use the box as a wonderful feedback station. I know it looks super, super simple, but it is incredibly valuable. All great players, they have different swings, remember, but that once you understand how to get into impact, it makes everything else so much easier. You know, so many people are working on trying to get in the right body positions, but they don't have the correct feel of impact. So it's like, well, what do they mean? You're trying to almost guessing. It's kind of, you've got to start with impact so that your body then knows, ah, that's what I'm going, going to do. So suddenly you're going to be able to match up this impact feeling and your body's going to not make silly kind of uh, moves like this because they won't make any sense. They're going to make more correct moves in order to achieve the correct feeling at impact. That's the key with this exercise, okay? So once you've developed this and got a feel for this, and even probably, again, just use that box, tap a few balls, just work on this movement backwards and forwards, getting that sensation. Do it in a mirror because every time I get someone to do something like this, we put them on camera and they think they're doing it, but they, you can see, they got low on, look on camera and they're not. So take some time, get that sensation, and then start to practice firing like I've done there off a tee. See if you can get that sensation through the impact. So I'm uncocking on the way through, but I'm trying to feel that motion we've just felt with the box. Then what we do is we start to kind of build this into some form of routine that you can actually take to the golf course. So what we do, we get ourselves set, and we go, right, okay, so I'm maybe normally here, that's what it felt like, so I'm gonna really feel, so if you slice it, you're probably a bit more here, so you wanna imagine now really getting that pressure on that lead side, and just, just leaning that shaft this way, there you go, there we go, but I'm not gonna practice driving, I still want to do what we did earlier, which is to fire that club, but I'm now firing it to a place, which is what I've just learned, or the feeling I've just learned, with that box, okay? So we start off really small, okay? Might have just a few, a few taps here. All I'm gonna do is work it back and try to feel that motion there through the impact area, okay? A few, few taps, just to get that sensation. And then obviously from there, you can build this comfortably into a routine you can take to the golf course where every time you go, you just literally get yourself set. You go, okay, right. Make sure I'm in great setup position. Where do I want to be impact? Just feel that motion, okay? If somebody slices it, by the way, really badly, I might get them to exaggerate more actually going this way. I might actually get them to go that way a bit more, even more this way because you're so used to doing this. If somebody hooks it, I might get them to go more this way, more angled to the left and back just because they get too much inside. But whatever it is, you feel it, you come back, Back nice and small, and a few small swings, and then gradually you can really 
start to let it go, okay? So start really, really small with this, okay? Remember, we still want to get this club swishing through. At no stage am I actually guiding this motion. I really want you here to be ripping through the shot. Don't want you to be trying to put it into position. I want you to be going, feel the position, swing through the position. Feel it, swing it. Feel it, feel it, here, really feel it, then swing it. Again, just small shots, just initially, before I go into the real ripper, okay? So work on that. Feel, first of all, get stage one, get some speed, you need speed. None of this works. If you're hanging onto this club and you try to do this, none of that's gonna work. You've got to have speed. Once you've got speed, you need the feeling through the impact area. Use the box. I know it looks simple, but it will really, really work. It gives you great feedback. Put yourself on camera too. If you enjoy this video, you're probably gonna enjoy this one right here. Check the iron, iron video out as well. But look, if you're new to the channel, come and join the community by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. And I always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below, so you'll never have to remember a thing. But until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.